First of all, I want to thank the Almighty God that at the end of the day, the mandate freely given to me by my people has been restored by the Supreme Court. Secondly, I understand very clearly the challenges and the situation in Imo State. Uh, even before now, only a few days ago, when I got to Imo State, I discovered that the salaries were not being paid in full. And uh, the reason being that the money coming from uh, Abuja, the Federation account, is not sufficient. What I did was to cut down the running cost. I cut down the running cost and forfeited the security vote donated to this governor, made up the money, and we were able to pay salaries 100% to all the civil servants. I also directed that the local government funds should be sent straight to local government until such a time the state is ready to release 10% of their IGR to local government. Then we can now begin to do the business of a JAC, Joint Allocation Committee. So I'm sure for 12 years, no governor visited the civil service uh, secretariat. I was there two days ago. Some of your colleagues went with me. And uh, water has never been available to the secretariat for the past nine years. Two days after my visit, water is running there now. They've been connected back uh, to electricity, and all the generators are being worked on now. So we, my mandate is about the people. My government will just be about the people. And uh, by the grace of God, I will not disappoint their expectations. And uh, I'm sure they will see good governance from a man with experience working in consultation with the political stakeholders in the state. I think we can do it differently, and the narrative will be acceptable to the people. On arrival to Imo State, I've been able to do reasonable consultations. I've uh, visited the leaders from the political class, and uh, like you must have heard and seen, uh, the party is properly reconciling, and the uh, leaders are coming back together, even across board. You, 27 members of the House of Assembly, 25 are now APC. They have decamped to APC, the state chairman of PDP in Imo State, and the seven members of the school has decamped to APC. So APC is building and the momentum is growing from day to by day by the day. So the issue of reconciliation is being given serious attention. What really happened in Imo State is not about the political party. It's about the way the election was conducted. Because the case I took to court was the exclusion of results of 388 polling units, which INEC did not cancel and which INEC also did not collect. So I asked INEC, why did you not include results that you have announced at the polling units? And no question, this question was not answered. So I went to court. I was not quarreling with the conduct of the election. I was not quarreling with my votes that were canceled by INEC. But what of these ones that were not canceled and were not collected? Which INEC had the originals and refused to bring the originals. And we presented the original duplicate given to our party agents to the court. And when they dragged and they insisted that the one given to securities should be brought for comparison, the police were issued a subpoena. They brought theirs, and it tallied with what we had. And then the court took this decision. At the level of the appeal court, the appeal court agreed with us, but later changed. God knows why they changed. But however, some senior officers of INEC from the Southeast. They had a minority judgment at their court. Yes. At the appeal court, yes, we had a, a dissenting judgment. There was a dissenting judgment. You must, you must have read about that. So all we are asking is that the members of INEC should remain neutral, especially in the Southeast. Some senior officers of INEC from the Southeast are obviously PDP card carrying members. To the extent that once the result is not in favor of that PDP, they will go all out to, to obtain the result. We had an election a few days ago Saturday. You must have heard what happened there. 
but this is going to be a business for another day. But I think I urge all of you to join hands, let us build a very strong democracy where equity, justice, and fair play will be the order of the day. So on the issue of uh, what uh, so the legacies of Sam Bakwe, of course, if you know Chief Sam Bakwe during his days, during campaign, he came out with a blueprint, a manifesto. He made promises, and that document he followed to the letter until the democracy was truncated. Campaigning as a candidate of APC, I had my manifesto built on three R, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery. You will agree with me with what I've just said that have happened two days ago. It's part of the recovery. We're also now design, we're trying to design an implementation plan for all those promises we made. In less than three, four days now, I'll bring out my implementation plan with timelines. God is willing, if we have the appropriate funding, we'll follow that document judiciously. And I'm sure the Imo people will be better off for it. And I'll bring prosperity to the state. Yeah, the first thing to address now is security, the problem of insecurity in the state. Kidnapping, arm robbery, you know, and all that has been on the increase. So, and uh, there is this apprehension that people are no longer safe uh, staying in their various homes. So the thing has become so rampant that government must stand up now and do a bold decision, something that must be courageous and bold to ensure that every citizen will have that sense of security. If that is addressed, we'll now begin to visit the, look at the infrastructural gaps. The roads are not accessible. So many roads are in bad shape. So from one point of the Oweri town, town to another point, people spend four hours, five hours. So these are some of the things. We will start by immediate, short, medium term, and long term plan. So we are still also working. Uh, it is part of what will be contained in that our document. But we already established priority areas, education, agriculture, all these are priority areas. Then government has no business being direct business people. We'll try to see how we can introduce PPP, public-private partnership, and bring private sector investors to also help build, grow our economy. We are interested in reviving the industries that have gone more rebound because of lack of electricity, because of uh, lack of potable water, because of lack of access road. I I'm going to, living here now, I'm going to talk with the Department of Petroleum Resources. We already have a gas pipeline that terminates at Overenta Navy Barracks. So if they uh, give us the approval, we want to bring private people that will take gas to our industrial layout so that all the industries will have gas, that gas pipeline as a source of power supply. And that way, the cost of doing business will come down and the businessmen will be encouraged. We are going to stimulate the economy and bring life back to our people. Yeah. Already coming with an agri program, because the issue of food security is very, very important. We only two days ago, I've directed my permanent secretary, Minister of Agri, to come up with, uh, because before I got him back, uh, to Imo State, they've already passed the budget for the year. And that budget had their own priorities and programs. Of course, most of them are not consistent with the programs of my own political party and what I think that will be better for our state. So we, they are now identifying for me, for instance, uh, rice, the areas in Imo State that we can grow rice. Then they're also identifying for me the other areas where we can do other farming. The headsmen, I don't forget, I represented a constituency that has Muslims and Christians. So the Muslims are in Imo State, they are my friends. And I've been working for, with them for the past eight years in the Senate. And when I announced my cabinet, you see that there are some members that are Muslims and some, members, and some are Christians. So the issue of national unity and national integration is uppermost in my mind. Because that is also another way of ensuring that Everybody is, uh, we are all safe as, a, as citizens. So but then the, the national policies on agriculture, where they are collecting all the policies on agriculture to which they will bring, there's already a small technical committee. You know, my deputy governor was the vice chancellor, University of Agriculture, Umudike Umaya. So he's also an agriculturalist. 
is now sharing a committee to come up with a full program for agri to ensure food security for our people. The very last one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>